who wants to dance with me at the opening oh um, yeah dance badly <laughs> me <laughs> it was great no i any kind of dance is well hello 90s exactly well i do i do this i don't know if it's getting jiggy with it um guys i'm super excited to be live with nella lee right now nella has worked on apex legends mortal kombat avengers assemble miraculous ladybug or miraculous um, nan, nan, natsu, menatsai, some anime that I need to ask you more about. And Ruby, among a ton of other things. Welcome. Yes. Hi. How's it going? Um, great. I just finished physical therapy. Everybody, we can, like, celebrate. Mela is out of her cast and crutches. <gasps> like, I, I started the year off great. I, uh, I landed on, in L.A., we have what we call earthquake pavements. So it's kind of like a Super Mario's where it just kind of drops. Sometimes they're not... They're not um, glued to the dun, 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 dun. So uh, I was uh, just walking, like, I had gone on this amazing walk uh, or hike in, in Malibu, came home and thought, let's go to the store real quick. Maybe one one house over from my house. And I uh, rolled my, I, I slipped, I guess I landed on one of those pavements, rolled my ankle, fell into a manhole, did like this really cool ninja roll out of it. And then my friend was like, damn, that was cool. And then she said, oh. Why did you do that? And I heard it go snap, snipple, crack, dislocated, fractured, tore two ligaments, like go big or go home. Oh my God. And the crazy well, thing is, hold it on just a second. Like this is like not scripted, guys. Hello? I hope it's just a delivery, but it was like this heavy knock. Dun, dun. If you need to go get Amazon. that, go to town. This is the chillest stream. You don't have to worry. I'm like, about hey, you guys, I just got to open some boxes. Yeah, hold on just a second. I'm going to mute, but... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then hold I'll on. keep them busy. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> guys, this is great. This is what happens when we, uh, you know, when we're working from home. Um, down a manhole. I know, dude. Oh, break every mold. You also went through that, but it wasn't a manhole. It was on set. The oh, my God, Talon Poppy. Thank you. Since Mel is not here, I'm like, you know, very engaged with the chat. You subscribed for four months. Holy cow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I usually do the shout outs at the end and we have the guests join and uh, do funny voices uh, thanking you guys. So I feel like that's a really cool way to have them interact and then have you guys hear a cool shout out. Um, well, it was only down a flight of stairs. Oh, I don't remember. I don't think I was there when it happened. I just remember the next day showing up and seeing you. 
uh, I haven't heard your voice like this. You guys, it was just a delivery. Like, sometimes people just really need to be seen. But it was like this heavy knock. Like, I thought, you know, sometimes it's like Amazon. This one was like, <laughs> and then this is it. Like, it was just for that. And did it's you probably have a sign for it? I, I don't know if it's lingerie or a bra, but you guys want to do an unboxing? Yeah, let's do it. it. ASMR. Um, We're doing it. Watch it be a bra. I don't know. Hold on a second. Let's see who it's from. I mean, listen, bras are cool. Whatever top you're wearing right now is so cute. I'm oh, digging. thanks. Yeah. Um, uh, Blanc Noir, like a jacket with little, just, um, uh, we call it camouflage, but I'm obviously, you can see me, so it doesn't work. And <laughs> this is, yeah, oh, you guys, it is lingerie. Sexy underwear. <laughs> yes! It's a onesie. I'm like the queen of onesies. They're so easy. Yeah. But also because I have, for those of you that don't know, I am well endowed on the top. Mela is 48, 34, 48. And so sometimes it helps to have something just strapped in so that they don't just, you know, free themselves. Yeah, so. I have the opposite problem. I have absolutely nothing. So I don't, don't you wish there was a donor it. program? Like I could have it on my... Uh, my driver's license. Yeah, yeah, because it's just, it's like a little balance out. It's not like I want huge boobs. Just a little more would be nice. Well, and, you know, you know I don't want it to be like, I have to pass to give them to you, because by the time 120, you're probably not going to want them. But, I mean, maybe I have my tonsils out or something. I'm going to be under anyway, and you're going to be like, hey, man, got to yeah, lean yeah. up with you just a little. Like a, por like a portion, yeah, yeah, a little mini portion. Mini Can you mini imagine? Mini. And also, I naturally have a Brazilian um, bum, so... <laughs> I would Wait, be like an all-around donor. Are you part Brazilian? No, no. It's just naturally Padau. Ah, I think yes. it comes from having island on both sides of my family. I have oh, an a nice bunda, body. which they say in Portuguese. And yeah. they even have a bikini line called Boom Boom in Brazil because it's Ooh. little butt. That's what they call the okay. butt, the Boom Boom. Um, this so is where this went, you guys. We're on Twitch. There's no gaming. We're talking about lingerie, Boom Boom, Brazilian butt lifts. Absolutely. We're real right now. <laughs> but you're au naturel, so you didn't get it. I book. am, actually. Yeah. You know, um, I have a British mum and a beautiful black dad, and um, he, both sides of the family come very amply proportioned. Awesome. And tell me how you learned Spanish and French. Oh, estoy aprendiendo español. Solo hablo un poquito. Like, I don't speak a lot of it, but I did okay. go to school in El Paso, and so probably 60, 70% of the people in El Paso speak Spanish. Yeah. Um, so that that's kind of, I can understand it very well, but I don't speak yeah. as much because when do I do it? But I want, that's the thing I want to do this year. I want to get back in touch with languages. Yeah. But, um, and French, we spoke when I was a little girl. And so, oh, je parle cool. plus français aussi. Um, J'oublie beaucoup parce que n'est personne ici parle avec moi. So no one really speaks French with me here. Yeah. But it's in there. Is your dad like French Caribbean or it just was a language? Oh, uh, Polynesian, Creole, Ethiopian and Welsh, actually. Wow, dude, what a cool mix. Yeah, I know you you have a bunch of accents on your resume, so I wasn't sure which were coming from growing up with parents who had accents. Or My mother was or... in the Air Force and diplomatic service. And so I just met a lot of people from all over the world and lived all over the world. Oh, cool. And I didn't. I didn't aspire to do voiceover. It just, people would be like, is there any way you could do? Um, and so I think the first half of my career was very much, um, I have my roommate, she just came down. Yes, it's live. <laughs> so <she's> like, <laughs> no, she can join if she wants. <laughs> we, have, we, we adopted a, a cat. <gasps> we rescued a cat named cat Apollo, Jasper. Cat Apollo Jasper. Apollo Jasper, also known as AJ. AJ. So Apollo Jaspi. Mm hmm Cool. Yeah. Well, if, if Apollo wants to show up on screen as well, we are very welcoming of pets. That would be a lot. Maybe okay. Aurora. But okay. Apollo is also very shy. <laughs> um, but I didn't aspire to be a voice actor, and, and I just had a, an affinity for being someone else, I guess. When you move 26 times before you're 21, yeah. you kind of have to figure it out. But what's interesting is I was in a, a, a car accident in 2014, and I fractured my back. You guys, I, I guess I'm danger prone sometimes. I, I was going to ask you about that because I'm sure I, it was rarely, like, rarely, and but I, and and you know, it. very rare. But I, I had a car accident. Someone was texting, and they ran a red light. <gasps> and 
I was on Genesee and Sunset, and it was one of those days where I always take the same way to get over to um, Warner Brothers. But on this particular day, I thought, I'm going to just turn on the street with lots of trees. Oh, my God. You know, and it was beautiful. And they had just paved Sunset. So, you know, when sometimes the street is higher when you're getting into it. So, you had, I had a very low car at the time, and so I was going over that, that construction part where it comes, the asphalt goes up. So, I was not moving very much. Um, and it was just like in the movies where you're just having your day. And then, you know, in the movies where it goes, like, it just surprises you. I remember just seeing a white sports car to my left and then it was spinning in the gray and you don't know you flatlined or passed. You don't know that's actually happening time for a few weeks when you're remembering the accident, even you're like, I don't know, but I remember spinning in the gray for a long time and I didn't feel any pain and uh, just kind of floating for a while. And then someone whispered in my ear, if you don't breathe, you'll die. And it was, wasn't a panic. It was just a choice. And I remember thinking, Oh wait, I have a great life. I got to go. And I took a deep breath and I opened my, my eyes and it was, the most pain I've ever felt in my life. Yeah. And there was uh, a woman through the windshield. I, I could tell she was calling the ambulance, I guess. I think that's when it happened. It could have been before. Um, the girl that hit me opened the door and she's like, I am so late. Are you okay? I have to get to work. And I'm sure she was in shock as well. But she's. I was like, help me. And this is before the firefighters came to like cut me out of the car. And she's like, seriously, you're not even bleeding. <laughs> and I just remember being like, and then the person who. What position's your car in at this point? What I have no idea. And it was so turned around that they were like, oh, I guess you tried to turn left in front of her. Like they didn't know because it was, it was all spun around. And uh, so this girl named Rose, who is a polyamorous burlesque dancing Herbalife seller, <laughs> She just happened to get to L.A. and she still had like this old paper map. She didn't have a phone at the time that would have navigation. And it was an older this car. This in 2014? 14, yeah, 2014. She'd come okay. down from Oregon. Okay, interesting. So she had just gone to the side of the road to read a map and was coming onto the road to the red light when this girl passed her and ran the light. So she saw it all. So Thank she God. was such an angel for me. And she's like, you know, you're okay. We've called the, the paramedics. And then I was out again. And then I woke up and there was this really hot firefighter. Yeah. Mike. Don't know his last name, but do we need to know it? I was like, and did we ever go back to knock on Mike's door? Well, I do work with the California Fire Foundation. So I've, I've been asking, I'm like, you know, I guess I could say thank you. It turned out okay. Yeah, you could. <laughs> and, um, so I wake up and it's like, he, they must know. They know what we're thinking. And he said, you haven't punctured a lung. Okay, just look at me. We're cutting you out of the car. Just look at me. And um, Just fall in love with me while I look into It was eyes. happening. I remember that morning. You know, I don't know if you have British mums. I guess it's all mums, but they're like, you know, make sure, you know, you have your nice, you know, lingerie on. Because if you're ever in an accident, you don't want people to see you granny pants. And it was funny. That morning, I thought about it and I had this really great set. Um, it was like a $200, like, agent provocateur, like, really gorgeous, right? And it flashed in my mind. Not like not like Mike and I were going to get it on, because he was basically holding my hair back before I threw up, which also happens, apparently. You know, he had a bag. He's like, do you need to throw up? I was like, no. And then when the door got, this is a lot of information, you guys, but this has never been before told. Um, <laughs> but uh, the door came off, and I was so compressed. I didn't realize your body will take water out of the places that you're compressed to try to make you small. Wow. And so there was this feeling of rushing water into my abdomen. And once, yeah. And then I just threw up and he had taken the bag away. Cause I was like, I'm fine. And then I just threw up and I was like, I'm sorry. And, and like, Mike's like, like, no, just a smoothie for breakfast. Add a girl. He goes, sometimes I get bacon biscuits and gravy and it's not pretty. <laughs> Oh, Mike was great, man. It was amazing. Wow. Um, yeah, but just 
all the things when you're in the hospital and you're looking up and the lights are flashing over your head, people are talking about you, but they think you can't hear them because you're kind of out, but you, you can, but you can't speak. And it was an experience. And, yeah. and lucky for us, I was in a band called Magnolia Memoir at the time. And we were actually about to break and we were going to be on night shows and had this really great song called Odds and Ends which you should check out. Um, the video is amazing, you guys. has a bunch of our friends that kind of did cameos. Oh, cool. But one of our friends was a speed metal drummer <laughs> in a band, but he was also a trauma doctor, ER doctor at Cedar sinai He'd gotten off at 4 a.m., and my friend, my first call, Alexander Burke, my composing partner, um, he called Steve, and they made sure to take really good care of me. So after all the MRIs, when I woke up in the hospital, I was in like the Kim Kardashian suite or something. I didn't know that all Hell hospitals yeah. aren't like on TV. It had couches and like a view of LA. It was so beautiful. And it took me a couple of weeks to understand how special that was because I've never been in a hospital like that before. Yeah. You know, so I, you don't know. You're not, you're so high. You're not like, oh, check out the furniture. You're yeah, yeah, like, yeah, of course. <laughs> so... So wait, so then this, so you're, you're, you're working through getting better. And at this point, are you a working voice actress? Have you figured out that that's what you, like, where, where are you at this point? Well, you know, at to that get point, yourself back together in again. 20, 2008, 2009, I was a, a, a bank analyst for a Wall Street mortgage firm. And wow. Just all voiceover, but like going to go to law school because who makes a living as a voice actress? Right, right. <laughs> that's what I was thinking, right? Because my family's like, sure, it's a nice hobby. So... I'm working, had paid off my student loans, was getting ready to pretty much grow up and go to law school. And I'm in this hospital in the best, like, spine center, in the, one of the best in the world, and the Hunt Spine Center. And um, I woke up, and it was like a Dorothy moment, and you were there, and you were there, but producers from, you know, the sound supervisor from Breaking Bad, and, and the good wife was there, and 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 Yuri Lowenthal, and... and um, Jason Charles Miller and people from Bang Zoom. And it was just all of these people in the hospital that week. And I thought, you don't need to go to law school. Like, I didn't, I missed four months of work and not a single bill. Every wow. single day I had a friend from the industry care for me. So I had 24 hour care. And I mean, I couldn't bathe myself. I couldn't get up. I couldn't walk. I mean, so this How long was, was this? Then. About four months before Holy I could kind of take care of myself. Yeah. But it was one of those moments where like, what do you really want to do? And I thought this, <laughs> because they, they made sure I had handicap accessible studios to finish some of my sessions. Um, it was just, was, oh, Cindy Robinson, Kate Higgins. Like I, there's a big long list of really yeah. wonderful people. And it was so lovely. And, um, you know, I still was working, but wasn't taking on a lot of jobs, but thought, what would I really like to do? And I thought, you know, I spent the first five years of my voiceover career doing mostly ADR I want to ask and about that. Yeah. Um, voice matching, voice replacement. Mm -hmm. I was kind of good at being in the dark, not being seen. It felt comfortable. And I thought I'd really love to do AAA games and animation. <laughs> so I got, you know, a top notch agent because I've been really focusing on music and I signed with that agent um, in 2016 and then the agency I'm with now in 2018, uh, A3, formerly Abrams. Um, mine, mine as well, that's where we yeah. met. I'll, I'll, sh I'll shortly remind you of that, but go ahead. Yeah, but just, it was an amazing meeting I, I and I had, I had that year booked um, a couple of games, but it's just like, while I was recovering, learning how to walk again, I got to see myself as a warrior goddess, as Jade, as a lifeline who, you know, revives people in Apex. So these are the things I was, you know, recording while I was reimagining what life could be like. Oh, wow. And I'm very big into neuroplasticity and, and your brain just has to remap things. So anybody who's interested, if you've had traumatic brain injury, which I did, um, strokes or, or, or certain types of brain damage, the brain is like the supercomputer and almost every cell has the whole motherboard on it. So it takes time, but your body can just redirect, you know, it's like a detour. And so you just have to figure out different ways to move your body. And so... It was such a beautiful journey, but 
knowing that I could still pursue my dreams and had great health care, which is rare in the U.S. And God, I was happy. Like for the first time in my life, just so present and so grateful and um, just laughing a lot. And I was such a serious kid. Like I had kind of a, a bit of a shit childhood mm-hmm. and you just, grow up really soon oh my gosh I'm sorry I'm like please open the harmless harvest um, I we we're all super engaged please continue this is so amazing. you you're just really present and you're waiting for the next you know thing to happen and it's like you live in a disaster it's why I'm so good at disaster relief and I volunteer to kind of have a calmness for the most part I only cry on interviews um, <laughs> which is great <laughs> But um, I have a love for first responders, our military professionals, and was really grateful to be in physical therapy next to, you know, people that just were so inspiring. And the Wounded Warrior Project and these gentlemen who just redefine possible every day. And I thought, well, can't feel sorry for yourself, Missy. Let's get to work, right? And I started celebrating myself, I think as women, but... I think the women's movement sort of overshadows the fact that people of all genders and identifications experience the crippling effects of perfectionism. Yeah. And so you may have done 50 things right, but your job is to make a list in the morning and at night of all the things you didn't do right, all the things you aren't. When you are learning to walk again, you're like, I tied my shoes. You're like a toddler. I mean, I remember thinking I'm going to go somewhere on my own and someone was going to pick me up. And it was the first time I was going to put on stretchy pants or any kind of pants. (laughs) I'm like falling off. I was just rolling. I was like, how am I supposed to do this? But you're just like, I put my pants on. What? 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 It's like, you just want to take pictures. (laughs) You're like, yeah. It's like, and you see three-year-olds, you're like you don't care you're like it matches enough it's yeah. it's material you just throw the shit out the window yeah and i just started having such a great time um getting to work with nether realm was a dream come true and and then apex i mean i love all my jobs uh but apex was really really special um because you you worked on that for a while before it came out we did um also, we thought it was going to be Titanfall, maybe. They didn't tell us a title. <laughs> yeah. And then in September, before it came out, I, it was supposed to come out in September, and they're like, well, we're going to wait and put it out in January. And you're like, no! We and I was like, okay. Long. They're like, but it's good. People like it. And you're like, because in Hollywood, you never know if you are going to be on the shelf or not. Like, you work on a project. My movie friends can tell you, film and television for sure. Yeah. You could do a whole series, and then it just dies Thank God for the pandemic, because everything's on TV now. Um, But when I went back, I think for a pickup in November, they said, yeah, we're not really going to do a campaign. It's going to be a surprise launch. You know, we'll just see if it lands. You know what that sounds like, Carolina. You're like, oh, so this is going to get tabled. So they said, yeah, we're going to have it come out in January. And that week, January came and went, and there was no game. And I was like, oh. It was really fun, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon on February 4th, 20, was it 18 or 19? 2019. um, I got an email from the casting director, and she said, hey, if you have time, would you mind posting your game came out today? (laughs) And I went online, like we do, because sometimes we don't see the full renders. We see, Mm -hmm. you know, images that are reminiscent. And, like, original Lifeline, it was very TLC, like Left Eye Lopez. So we were always Uh, singing, uh, don't go chasing time fall. You know, we were, like, just constantly making this joke. So I didn't know what she looked like. So I'm looking on the Internet. Already a million people are playing it. It's like this instant success. I'm freaked out. I, I go ahead and post about it, but can't take my eyes off of social media because what is happening? And because we, sometimes you have a few people in the session, but at Respawn, it's a much smaller company. So everybody, like the 87 or 90 people that they were making, everybody was involved in the game. Everybody oh. helped. So there would be 10 or 12 people in your sessions. So you got to know them, That's and amazing. Manny went and had writers, and, 
And so you're cheering them on too because you're seeing these posts, their lives are changing. And you start to get this idea that this thing that they've worked on is <laughs> succeeding. So it's just yeah. like tears and joy. So what happened to your Instagram? Did it blow up because of Apex? Um, yeah, I mean, I think social media definitely. I, I, I was afraid of being on social media. You know, I, I'm better now, but at the time... <laughs> This is a true story, guys. I was worried that if people knew what I looked like, like in music, I felt confident. But in general, I thought, oh, if people know what I look like and I'm so unattractive, it will probably end my career. Isn't it crazy the things we tell ourselves? Absolutely. But that was a very real fear for me that I wasn't pretty on camera. I, you know, it just wasn't cool. I was that kid who moved a lot, who was at the table by herself, and you kind of stay there for a while. You don't, you don't think you're going to be one of the cool kids when you grow up. And you're so cool. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm the coolest geek ever. <laughs> well, wait. So well, how, I, I hope we've worked through these things. And if we have, how did you work through that to come out? Because you are incredibly beautiful and incredibly cool. Oh. And you know, a lot of it. I mean. I am writing a book. Don't worry. Um, in the middle of all that, I met my biological father. Oh, wow. And so we got to share me getting cast in Black Panther and Mortal Kombat and Lifeline. Like, she's a spitting image of my Nana. So it was really a beautiful thing to see how once I could really settle in, in who I was and, and my background and be connected to family, how it it came out in my work. The roles that I get are just me, very authentically me and different parts of me and um, being a, you know, I don't like the term biracial because I feel like we're all part of the human race. <laughs> so yeah. I'm fully human, um, but multicultural. Yeah. And, and sometimes when you grow up that way, you're not enough of any one thing. You're not Polynesian enough. You're not black enough. You're not white enough. So you feel kind of like you're drawn wrong and what was beautiful about looking just like my dad connecting with my you know heritage and kind of settling in in the celebration of myself wholly in my life my personal life as well as in my work it was just it didn't matter I feel like my beauty comes from the love I feel from the people in my life and from all over the world and the apex community I mean I have great fandoms in all of Mm -hmm. um my work but apex wow yeah wow like just that community is so tight and it's all over the world and you know i've connected with um some trinity brothers and sisters i'll be there in january you know my my friends from uk i've you know there's people from oz and new zealand and and just so much connection that it just didn't matter what i looked like anymore i mean apparently i'm adorable so. You, you are. Uh, do you do you think that uh, because of this, I mean, it came out during the pandemic and then we haven't unfortunately been able to travel because meeting meeting fans at conventions is a really beautiful thing. So you it's been mostly online that you've had to experience this, right? Um, yeah, I mean, we did a couple of conventions, but definitely 2020 wouldn't have been the same without the Apex community. Um, and not just the community, but the cast and the writers. We have our, we have our famous uh, Twitter thread and, and text thread gets pretty naughty and, and love it, love it. And we're yeah. just, just makes you laugh. And we got to connect and do a few Zoom calls. And I've seen pictures of those. <laughs> <They're amazing. laughs> it's a great unexpected family I mean from going from someone who kind of felt like an orphan growing up to having family all over the world in spades going through the pandemic I was alone for most of it um, yeah. for the first I guess eight or nine months I was quarantined yeah. in my house by myself but I wasn't by myself you know I had friends and um, yeah I'm so grateful anyone out there who is you know, uh, playing games of any kind or watching any of my shows, just thank you. We, I, there's hundreds of messages that that kid who used to eat alone at the lunch table, um, like it turned out okay. It just like, it just heals the heart. Yeah. Even through the heartbreak, you know, for someone of color to see a sea of skin colors and lifestyles and cultures marching 
you know, for equality and for kindness and, 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 and human rights was very healing. Because I think for those of us that have gone through any kind of abuse, whether it's, you know, verbal, emotional, sexual, physical, um, psychological, or, yeah, or any kind of racism or bias, which is probably almost everyone on this, um, the connection that occurred because we were all at home, that's a once in a lifetime world changing thing. And the world isn't perfect, but we're now in a great big dark room, you know, with everyone else. And it's just yeah. not so frightening anymore. Absolutely. So you, you mentioned that a lot of the characters are, are parts of you. And I, I, I was curious as to how you found Tiki inside <laughs> of you because she's adorable. It's funny because we all read for several parts, but Tiki, you know, there's a very sunny side of my personality. You know, there's two types of people, people that sit in the darkness and, and it's no judgment. Sometimes you've had a dark existence or childhood or tragedy and it, it really it overwhelms you but I always felt like I had angels and others watching over me mm -hmm. telling me that it would get better and it did and telling me to take it one breath at a time and so when they show you the initial drawings there's this thing you go back to being like six or seven you're not judging it it's weird in animation and games a lot of times you don't really see renderings and then they'll kind of dial in a voice but for her, she was like, everybody has a little something inside of them. It's been miraculous, especially you. And it just felt very, it's okay. You know, Marinette is very insecure about who she really is. She's only a superhero some of the time, which is all of us, right? Yeah. And we think, wow, if we have a good story to share on Instagram, you know, if we're the hero, everyone will love us. But it's difficult to, to celebrate ourselves when the cameras are off or when the lighting is wrong or the pimples are there or the job didn't come. Yeah. And I love that Tiki loves Marinette in that, that she celebrates her all the time. So I think, um, and a beautiful thing is I had just been cast as Tiki and we did this, this live reading. And three days later, I met my biological father for the first time. Wow. And you know, the first thing he said to me, not knowing anything, he said, Hello, Ladybug. Oh my gosh. And that's what he calls me. I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah, and wow. I have a sister that looks like me, and he calls her Butterfly. So it's Butterfly Kisses and Ladybug Hugs, and we say goodnight on the text, and it's pretty cool. Oh my God, that's beautiful. But Tiki's wow. like a love letter from the universe. It's interesting, Absolutely. you know, because now I know more that I have the Polynesian background. So I'm playing all these Tiki's. I got to play Jade, who's very much like this Indo-Asian, African influence. And it's interesting how when we settle into ourselves that we get these confirmations from the universe. And yeah. Lifeline, same thing. There's a picture of my Nana at 20, and she just looks just like Lifeline. Like, there's spitting image down to, like, little freckles. And, oh, my God. And can, you, she's can you give spicy. me a few voice lines as Jade and as Lifeline? Um, Jade reminds me very much of Mela, who was younger, ironically. Quite serious. Able to get the job done. I'm getting all choked up. <laughs> I get your you I'm, I'm feeling it too. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I have to take a sip. I'm finally strong enough. Harmless. Oh my gosh, you you've been through mm -hmm. so much. You're you're killing it. Oh, thanks. Incredible. But you know, Jade, I remember I auditioned by the way for Guard A. So always imagine that you're you're going for the lead. Um, but she said, "Well, you seem confident. Now you seem overconfident." And so she was just really just understated. Um, Lifeline was like, pass me that sugar. I'm not the one you should be afraid of. It's them upstairs. And so it's kind of like she was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like some of the scenes never made it, but there was like the scene of like, we were underneath the arena. And so she's like, no, 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 no. Put your gun down. And so I... I remember even thinking, well, if they want, like, Jamaican voodoo priestess, I can't do that. But, you know, having some of the, the Creole and the Trini background, I was like, I pulled from this. And it was wonderful because they're like, actually, we, we don't want 
the accent to define the person. We don't want mm -hmm. a trope. Yeah. We want a person. So what can you bring to it? And so it was really exciting. And, and I love, because one of the things my nan does say, pass me that sugar. You know, she's very like, hmm. <laughs> she's got that attitude that, <laughs> It's also really sweet, though. That's what's yeah. so magical about that. It's like attitude, but it's really freaking sweet. Yeah. And then um, there is a new show coming out, uh, executive produced by Jackie Tone and Kristen Bell. Oh, wow. Um, created by Michael Scharf and Jackie Tone, and it's coming out on Amazon in May, and it's called Do Re and Me, uh -huh. and it is based on music, and... They're little birds, right? That sing? Yes. Yeah. Little birds and who sing. Are you one of them? Blood from um, Lion King and Harry Potter, um, Kristen Bell, she's an up-and-coming singer. She's been in a few Disney things. Yeah, I think she's like an, an indie um, actress who's going yeah. to make it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look her up. Jackie Tone from Glow and just about everything else, but just an incredible cast. And I remember even auditioning for that. And, you know, sometimes you get, we're always worried about perfection. But when I saw this drawing, she teaches music, it just reminded me of, you know, jazz and Magnolia memoirs. So I was like, well, Doe, how does that make you feel? Because sometimes music can make you feel sad. Or if you're feeling sad, sometimes you just have to make up music that makes you feel happy. You know, like, <clears throat> something like that. What are you feeling, Doe? And so she was very much like, well, music is magical, but whatever comes up, it's like there's no wrong answers. It's very jazz. And so there's this character I play, and and I just loved her, you know, because she's like, that sounds good. And um, when we got in, it turned out that one of the producers had seen me in Magnolia Memoir. And the casting director said, hey, I just, she pulled me aside. She goes, I just wanted to let you know you weren't what we were looking for. And I was like, thanks uh, thanks yeah <laughs> she's yeah. like no we imagined like a primary school like third grade teacher who would just explain the music and so it'd be a really fun show but there'd be a teacher in the sky going well that's a whole note like very dry uh -huh, uh -huh. but the moment I kind of settled into my own musical background they just like that's it that's it she's Meister Moon and that's such a perfect, beautiful example of not going, what do I think they want? It's like, well, what can yeah, I bring to the table that's part of me, you know? Well, and also even meeting the producer, one of the producers, Terry Clayton, um, she had seen me singing like eight years before, before my accident, and um, loved the band. And she's like, I remember seeing you. And at that time, I wasn't thinking I'll be an actress, I'll be in voiceover um, full yeah. time. But she remembered it. Yeah. So I, I tell sometimes when I'm, you know, guest speaking or teaching, um, I have the hiccups, hold on a second. <laughs> hold on. It's, it's like waiting. It's like a chest curl. It. it could be a burp, also, guys. Like, that's worth an emote, right? Um, I want to welcome the Help Network. I don't think I've ever had you guys on my stream. Thank you. Uh, let me know who from the Help Network is represented today. Ooh, okay. The Help the help network. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah, they um, do casting here and they do great uh, voice awesome. acting. But yeah, I mean, I think sometimes people think, well, you know, I didn't book the job and I thought I did a good job. But I'm in a, a, a Disney series right now that I thought I crushed the callback on and didn't hear anything for 18 months. Oh my god! They redid the character, put her in a different season, you know. It happens. And it happens. Can you talk and about that or that's not out yet? Oh, Owl, Owl House. Yes. Oh, Owl House. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Congrats. That's a huge deal. Great show. You know, and Do Re Mi's coming out. But there's several times where, especially in this industry, and I think, I think in any industry, mm -hmm. a lot of times people want to give their resume. But if you can lean into who you are, your narrative makes you utterly unique. And people yeah. resonate with vulnerability and honesty. Yeah. Absolutely. So even if you're not right for that job, you, your, your job is to connect with other human beings. And, and you'll never fail to if you are connected to what you love, what you're passionate about, um, because it gives people permission to do the same. They'll start yeah. talking about what they love and what they're passionate about, and they won't know why, but they're like, oh my gosh, Carolina, I just love talking to her. But it's really that Carolina gave Mel a permission to just be you know, um, and you, you'll have opportunities that come in your life because you are yourself. Yeah. And I, I just, 
I know that it's not just for acting or for the arts. A lot of us live a censored life. Mm -hmm. We learn at eight or nine what we're allowed to show, who we're allowed to be to get love. And then we kind of hold on to it like we're still nine, but we're 29. Yeah. And learning to sit back and find out what you love, who you really meant to be. You know, I think, you know, we see that in, in, in struggles right now with, with, you know, sexual or gender identity. It's like we're getting to rediscover who we are as human beings. Yeah. And it's a very powerful experience to be in the presence of someone who is holy who, themselves. It's, yeah. it's, it's a celebration. And it makes you feel like, well, what do I want to do? What could I be? So it's really important to be yourself and to embrace your story. And I'm learning that even now to, you know, I don't want to ever be disrespectful, but you kind of, when you've had a, a rough go of it, you, yeah. you don't know how to talk about it because you don't want to bring everyone down. But I realize now it's important to be very transparent about some of the experiences in my youth because yeah. people that are going through it now need to know that there is another side. Absolutely. Like you can get to that other side. I want to share with you some of the comments because they are, you know, um, they're resonating. Booty Farts, who is a loved one by myself and a VIP here, um, says, Mela, you have no idea how much I needed these words today. She's one of those, and then Killer0522, she's one of those people that say, look at the bigger picture, and I love that. You're such a serene and beautiful person. I am living, and I am living. Mela always brings soothing words. All of these, I mean, I just feel like uh, everyone's been super engaged with everything that you're saying and you know I, I do feel like this twitch hang is about where the conversation goes and sometimes it's just a bunch of people doing their voices because that's what they're feeling that day and having a great time but I also feel like it's really beautiful to hear everything you've just been through and are still going through because life is this continuous thing right um and that that's part of the discovery of what makes us shine as individuals because you're not trying to be somebody else you're just bringing Mela and all her different parts to different roles that you do yeah, and leaning into them. And that makes so much sense, right? For us yeah. And authentic. I think I worried because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm good at, at drawing from experiences, but I, I never felt as cool as my characters. I still struggle. <laughs> <laughs> but you are your characters. <laughs> well, and it took me a second to be like, well, they wouldn't exist without me. But I mean, Exactly. When you start voiceover, you think, great, I love it. It's kind of acting that you're in the dark. Nobody sees you. Nobody told me about conventions. <laughs> and then there would be like three to 5,000 people at a Q&A. And I was petrified. Yeah. You know? Have, have you been to them in person with, a char yes. with characters? Oh, cool. I wasn't sure if the... I have. And then, you know, I remember my big goal for 2020 was to get over... Um, being yes please do whatever you need to um <laughs> being uh, do a little dance behind Mella. we would love to see that <laughs> well sometimes like she doesn't know that the kitchen's on and there's been a few times where it's like i'm like oh, lazy. <laughs> <laughs> but um i wanted to get over being afraid of being on camera like I'm around, gosh, if you guys are in LA, every, every, the ugly people are beautiful. Like everyone's weirdly smooth and beautiful and it's a little overwhelming. Ugly people are beautiful. <laughs> like, it's a little overwhelming. Um, not that anyone's ugly, but you know what I'm saying. Um, and I just felt like I can grab a good shot if I need to, but I just didn't feel comfortable in front of a camera. Like I have friends who are like, oh, I'd love to put you in my show. And I'm like, ooh, on camera? Because my impression was I needed to weigh like four pounds or, you know, just all the things I wasn't. And I thought for 2020, I'm going to get over my fear of being on camera. Yeah. So I did a photo shoot in January and February. I was going to do a photo shoot every month for the year. That was my big thing. And then this thing happened in March lockdown. But then this every thing. session from that point on was on Zoom. <laughs> so it was like, oh, you're going to have to look at yourself. Yeah. and just get over yourself and ha so. have you gotten over yourself i think i have some good angles okay I you're like i'm always going to talk to the people on zoom like this because it's my best side yeah. oh my gosh you're like, no right. you look so stunning right now you need to stop like oh my god you're so beautiful and 
the radiate the radiation the radiance within is coming out so that's you know it's it's all it's beautiful inside and out thank you thank you absolutely everybody. um uh, Continue, and I please. look forward to meeting people in person in 2022. I got my first vaccine shot on the 1st of April. Oh, cool. I got one on the 29th. I believe I'm going to become an X-Men. Okay, everyone's talking oh, about the pain and the fever and the chills, but I love that uh, one of the show creators for Do Re Mi, Michael Scharf, he's like, all right, so anybody else feel like they just got superpowers? He's like, I can breathe out of both nostrils for the first time in my life. And I was just like, who knows what else that vaccine is just like cutting out all COVID virus. You're like, well, the air cleared up in L.A. today, and that's why you can breathe out of both nostrils. Maybe, but yeah, maybe that we're getting our superpowers. Yeah, we're all becoming X-Men. Or miscreants. I just started watching, oh, I was watching Thunder... What is it that the one with Melissa McCarthy and uh, mm. and Octavia? I forgot the name, but it's just it's all these shows are so funny and TV movies. Um, Mela, is there a, a project that you would like to talk about? That I mean, I think that they we as as actors we connect emotionally to most of our characters because we have to. But um, besides Apex and Miraculous Lady, but she's behind you, right, Tiki? You got a little a little yes, she's so cute. Um, is there is there another you know, project that you've worked on that's just been so uh, soul giving to you and that you've connected on such a beautiful level uh, that you'd like to share because I just, I love how you've connected your life with all the work that you've done. Well, you know, I mean, there are some shows coming out that I can't talk about yet. I'm waiting, but I can't talk about Dory and Me. Um, I just did Craig of the Creek. I flipping love the writers. So it was great to be guest star on Craig of the Creek. Owl what's, House. what's that character sound like? Oh, her name is Diane, and she loves, it's like they're into Elder Con, so they're, he meets her at a convention, Craig meets her at a convention, and they love Slide the Ferret, which is basically Sonic the Hedgehog, mm -hmm. um, but she's just really into stuff, and like, oh my gosh, that was crazy, like, that game doesn't even make sense, I mean, it's basically just a ferret, and you slide sandwiches down a log run, and he eats them, I don't get it, but anyway, oh my derbs. Is that the Sonic, you know, it's like, is that the Slide the Hedgehog? Um, it was like a silly straw, like it was like this massive straw. She's like, I call dibs. And then it's just like, she's just really excited about stuff. And then she's kind of, you know, well, um, I like to be like really crazy and I'm such a rebel. But I did make my bed this morning because I love my mom. <laughs> yes. She's the perfect like 13, you know, that kind of like, I'm my own woman. I'm do oh, mom. Yeah. Hi. Can you give me a ride home? you know so yeah, yeah. oh my god um, I, I love being a part of projects not just for the how big the part is but the people that are in it like supporting these are like my my dream projects there's a few things for cartoon network that i'm getting to do oh cool you know, for amazon and netflix and just being beside these people and being in those projects i think I mean, obviously my career will keep going or whatever, but I'm in a situation where I'm literally living the life of my dreams. Like, I, and I'd say, you know, it's not the, the life I dreamed of when I was a kid because I, I didn't dream like that. I didn't think that was possible. Mm -hmm. You know? And, and I think that's why you're talking about these things and also, you know, the, the importance of the diversity behind the voices in what we're doing is giving kids the chance to hear a character that maybe speaks like their Mexican mom or their, you know, West African dad or whatever, because we, yeah, and there wasn't enough of that. And I think that that's giving these kids also the possibility to think, oh, I could do that too. If, if that's something it is important, but I think Apex, one of the reasons it resonated is, and I think it came through whether it was overtly written, they wanted the characters, even though they're diverse from cultures, like when we talk about diversity, a lot of people think it's just skin color, but that's like, it's not really effective. It's not inclusive. Yeah. It's actually exclusive. So if we talk about the diversity conversation being about culture, mm -hmm. now everybody can be a part of the diversity. So regardless of your skin color, you might be part of, you know, a certain culture, Italian culture, gay culture, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But it now no longer is just a trope. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have every gay person stabbing fingers or, you know, just like these things. You don't have every, you know, black girl always talking like this. I mean, what is happening? Yeah. So yeah. 
I think Apex kind of was at the forefront of some of that, but, but gaming in general has taught us about working beside people with from very different value sets, very different physical features, like from different planets. We have an entire generation of people that have grown up now in gaming and expect to be on a battlefield with people that don't look like them. Absolutely. And that's really powerful. And so I'm, I'm proud to be a part of a voiceover industry right now that is representing diversity on a much deeper level than an accent or skin color. Yeah. And that there's a depth of character, you know, especially as Americans. I, you know, I thought being multiracial, you know, would resonate with a very small group. But what I found is I have friends that are 100% Korean or 100% Japanese, but were born here and struggle with being enough uh -huh. of something. And there's this definition or they they were born here and someone's like, could you make a more... Um, Asian sound. Well, if you're born in America, you sound like an American. So, and if you happen to be Asian, it doesn't matter if you have an accent, you don't, what your life's, I mean, it's a, it's a cultural identity, but it's interesting in the, in the quest for diversity, we're sometimes out of ignorance, but not malice necessarily. Someone wants diversity and they're like, so could you do the stereotype that we're very familiar with? Yeah. When, if you want to know what a Japanese American sounds like, ask any Japanese American. If they're from Boston, they might sound like they're from Boston. If they're from Georgia, they might sound like they're from Georgia. You know what I mean? It's like, I was in Texas at South by Southwest before the pandemic, and there was a, a person who she's like, thank you for mentioning that, because I'm from, you know, I Iran, but I was born here. But she sounded like this. I just want to thank you for bringing that up because I'm from Iran, but I was born here. Yep. yep. And she's like, because not everyone's fresh off the boat. Yeah. Absolutely. And, it, you know, so I'm very excited about that representation. And, and as Americans, sometimes we are uniquely separated from our heritage. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the homogeny is, is lovely, but also sometimes we don't get to explore that. So yeah. this year connecting with people all over the world for me has been very healing and learning about my cultures as well. That's amazing. I, and I do think that the video games have been at the forefront of this because uh, I can speak for Overwatch and Valorant. And even if the characters do have accents, um, you know, they, they're, they have this whole other, besides their magical powers, they have this whole other career that makes them a biologist or a biochemist or whatever. And, and their gender identity is also this thing that isn't brought up at the beginning. So you don't automatically go, Oh, that's the gay character. No, right. that's a character who has all these facets and all these sides and all these amazing attributes and they just happen to be gay and so we're going to let you know nine months down the line so you don't have these preconceived notions of what that is well, isn't that what life is like it's not like you like order coffee from someone and they have a tag on them that tells you exactly what they are yeah you know gender fluid would you like some you know would you like some <laughs> on top <laughs> it's like what nigerian accented mother from wherever you know like we don't yeah. we don't present ourselves like this so you know and Absolutely. even in in my community i I've, i had some people that were like because people don't mean to, but a lot of times for me, especially for me, I, I have steroid controlled asthma and wasn't outside a lot during the pandemic for obvious reasons. Yeah. And so I'm a little paler than I would normally be. I will be tan soon. I'm so excited for this summer, but I'm still mellow. Like my DNA hasn't changed. Yeah. And I remember somebody, you know, saying, look at this picture People will sometimes take pictures and, and meaning well, but they will filter them for you mm -hmm. and they will lighten your skin and they will do all these things to homogenize your features and make your nose thinner. And like, so then it gets out there and someone's like, who the hell is this? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, yeah. It's not me anyway, but like not meaning to be, but I remember thinking, you know, I was hurt because there was a couple of people that were like, well, this white woman just took a job from a woman of color and I am a woman of color. And as soon as I would tell them what my background is, they'd be like, Oh, okay. All good sister. You know, like I'm cool. I hope I didn't offend you. And I'm like, well, you kind of did. 
because there's that judgment be, before they're like, well, there's nothing on all of your profiles. And it's like, I didn't, somebody actually used the word, I didn't see a racial registry on you. I'm sorry, what? Like a gold star? Like we've tried that last century. It was really disastrous. Let's skip that. Um, but we don't know people's cultures or heritage, but more important, we don't know their heart just by looking at them. Mm -hmm. Every day, someone that we meet could be going through so much. You know, your maid, one of, when I was recovering from my car accident, someone bought me a maid service to help me clean up. And I'm still friends with the girl that came. Her name is Ashley. And she was um, an Iraqi vet. And there was no work for her when she got back. The best money she could find was being a maid. Mm -hmm. Had like laid her life down for people in this country. And because I had been a maid <laughs> as well after graduating with honors, because it was the best job I could find. Um, she was like, thank you for talking to me like I was a human being. And I thought, well, of course. But she had basically been dealing with people talking to her like English was her second language. And like she was this going. is expensive. I'm watching you. And this is like a veteran who like... They talk louder. Yeah. And she was, you know, her sense of self wasn't wrapped up in what she did, you know, and that was yeah. really good. But I think sometimes people make judgments. But your maid could be a doctor from another country who's just trying to figure out how to yeah. save up to take... You know, they're most, most taxi drivers in New York City have, you know, law degrees, medical degrees, uh, crazy things from other countries. It's they've had to flee. And they speak English on top of their native language. Exactly. So, yeah, I think it, we're learning a lot about um, I love that about the pandemic that we've all kind of like. Who knew I'd be so cute in pigtails? Who knew you are so cute in pigtails with your sexy lingerie? Well, I'm not wearing sexy lingerie. It's just coming Look, out. Whatever's up on top is mad sexy. So I don't know what's going. That's it's cute. A sports bra. Oh well, it looks like a cute little like strappy thing. I don't know. I don't know okay, what's I'm going on under it. there. So I can't. You know, sell it. there's a little sheer happening here too. So okay. you know, yeah. yeah. So I just love that we've all had a chance to just connect in our pajamas and have a big year and a half pajamas. Yes, absolutely. I look forward to the world not being exactly the same as it was. Some people are like, I just want it to go back the way it was. I'm like, do you? Do you? Do you? I think that we've learned some really great changes. I miss the in-person connection and I want I want us to take everything we've learned from this being in pajamas yeah. at home in front of a computer all day to back to what whatever we can go back to you know I do miss group records I miss meeting people oh my gosh and yes always and, and and feeding off of that energy in the booth you know definitely but I was so lucky in 2019 like for all of 2019 I was recording the series with Jackie Tone and Luke uh Youngblood and Robbie was in it um yeah, you know, Robbie, you know, it's Robbie. Robbie. Robbie and I was like, yeah. Robbie, Luke, I'm just like, actually, you guys know all my friends. It's most, most of these guys do know all the voice actors, though, so, you know. <laughs> um, Frida Wolf. Um, it's interesting when you're in a live record because it's not just that you get to bounce off each other. Yeah. The, the little seven-year-old in you is like, oh, my gosh you know, that's Roger or that's Matt Mercer, you know, like this, these people you've dreamed of, your, yeah. your talent, like, uh, good God, Robbie is salty as AF, right? But he's so good. Yeah. Like yeah. the stuff that comes out of him, you just, it's like, sometimes we have to, and you know, you've been here on the live read where you're like trying to hold it because we're all on mic, but it was so good. It's just yeah. like, can you believe we get to do this for a living that, that we get to just watch this talent, like just follow yeah. No, I, I have moments where recording for Casa Grande is where, like, the guy who voices Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life is there. I'm like, dude, you're amazing. You know, and, and then right? watching them do something else is incredible. And then I'm, and I'm in an episode for Cartoon Network for uh, SpongeBob, where the voice of SpongeBob is on as well. And I'm just like, that's crazy. That's crazy. You know, your seven year old self is like, no. -uh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, there's a request. Can you say Mozambique here? Uh, I probably could. Mozambique. Yeah. Yes. That's so beautiful. I love it. <laughs> um, well, Mela, as we wrap up, is there anything you'd like to, you've given uh, the whole chat so much, so many nuggets of wisdom and, and joy. all these comments. There are quite a lot. My goodness. 
Yeah, like is there Boa tarde, we have people from Brazil. I mean, we have people from all over Wales, uh, Rhode Island, uh, <laughs> which is an island. It is an island. It is an island. Um, <laughs> but uh, what, yeah, what would you like to, parting words of wisdom. Oh, wait, let's, I need to shout out two people. And if you want to help me out in fun voices, that would no be more great. more work pigtails because of me. <laughs> uh, you know the way to my heart <laughs> yes yeah that's really quick I'm gonna while you're shouting out I'm gonna look through some of these comments and promise to try not to cry you got it you got it um, some of them go off on tangents uh, there's a lot the boom boom someone's in Australia right now okay meow indeed subscribe for four months thank you so much because propaganda is useless <laughs> propaganda is useless um, Danny you get a boop boop like Oprah, and you get a boop, and you get a boop, and you get a boop. Tal and Poppy, subscribe for four months at Tier 1. Nice. Green teams. Thank you. Uh, so that's it. It's 9 p.m. in Wales. Thank you, Mercy Yura. Um, so those are the subscriptions for today. Uh, thank you, thank you. The potatoes are useless. Oh, potatoes are not useless, dude. They're so delicious. Um, oh, Anchormania redeemed a boop. Boop. Zeitgeist redeemed another boop. Boop. Um, Michelle Noir Studios, boop. My character boops people in Overwatch. So I see think, that. I see that. Yeah, yeah. I can't help. Melody is saying yes, she does. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, what Carole a crew you have today. Yeah, it's a fun one. Uh, Jacob Florin twenty seven. More info on Yoru's VA. Send it to Maisie Grove. She's in charge of everything. Um, I know you mentioned there's another Japanese dude who's not the one that's uh, mentioned on. Um, on uh, IMDb, Daisuke Naki Namikawa, who says he's a voice actor, we'll have to ask him if he is indeed um, the voice of uh, Yoru, but I don't know. It's just hard to find people, guys. So, Boa noite from Portugal. Guys, thanks for being here. Um, Mela, parting words of wisdom as I let you go off into your thousand million recording sessions that you have to oh, do. Oh, that's a good one. It's, it's thousand million taxes is what I'm doing today. Oh, gosh. Um, no matter what the day brings, and I say it to everyone, you matter. You mean something. And you make a difference. Yeah. In the lives of everyone around you. Don't ever think that you don't matter. You more than matter. And um, do follow me on social media. If there's any questions you guys have, I'm the Melalee at, G uh, at Gmail is my email, or just the Melalee on Insta. And um, in case I've opened up something that you're like, ooh, you know, because every now and then you just want to talk. Okay, I'll, I'll check out those DMs. Um, I'll be starting once a month free voiceover webinars uh, starting in May. So if you're interested in that, just um, DM or email me and we'll put you on the list. But booty Farts 22 is taking notes right now. I well, know it. Yeah, booty Farts is prolific. He is prolific. Yes. I love it. Twitch is so great because you're like, you're all serious and you're like, all right. Twitch Nizzle needs to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Booty Farts thinks, you know, that the world is going to be a better place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, too funny. But That's um, amazing about the voiceover sessions. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I could either wait 20 years and give you all the ways to make it 20 years ago or just just share what's working now and, and sometimes have some special guests like maybe Carolina and we can talk about, you know, some of those those things that happen when you're in, in studio and no matter how good you are, sometimes we get in our own way. Oh my God, we do. Absolutely. And we have to talk ourselves. We need a little tick tiki going, you're okay, you're yeah. amazing. We need our own band girl. <laughs> yeah, we do. You're miraculous. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mela, this has been so wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me, you guys, um, Carolina especially, and everyone else. I hope you have a beautiful day. Um, my friend Dave Nadelberg has a show called uh, Mortified, and where people read out of their journals from junior high and high school. <laughs> and you, like, obviously, you look back, and it was so important back then, but just, we, you're laughing but crying because it's so um, relatable. But he ends every show with, we were freaks, we're fragile, but we all survived. On we that note, guys, we have each other. And thank you for providing this platform, Carolina. You, you're so welcome. It's a pleasure. Guys, keep booming and booping. Okay. Boop.